So this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I do role-based authorization inside my T3 application. So I've been working on this uh, online classroom app. Let me load it up real quick, where basically it's a, an application for teachers and students to be able to join classrooms and learn lessons together. Uh, teachers can teach lessons and upload assignments, and then students can submit submissions to those assignments. And a teacher can come in and grade some of those. So for this to all work out, like we have certain pages that are shared between the teachers and the students. And I had to set up some type of role-based authorization. So the first thing that happens is when you first sign up, um, if I can find this, there is a Prisma model that has the user. So let's go to that. Here we go. Let me zoom in one. And if you look at this user um, model, you'll see that it has a role here. The role is equal to a, a string that's optional. So I will say I'm using next auth. So when you first sign up, it creates this user for you and the role is gonna be undefined, right? So when you first sign up, it actually takes you to a welcome page that has you pick, are you a teacher or are you a student? And that's what sets your role and puts that in the, the database here. So let me go ahead and go to that. So this is the welcome page I'm talking about. It basically just says like, hey, before we start, click what type of user you are. And you can either click, I am a teacher or I am a student. And once you click one of those buttons, it hits a endpoint that changes your role to either be a student or a teacher. So if we look at this, we have a set role as teacher that basically takes the session that you're logged in with. It gets your user ID and it's going to set your role to teacher and then the same thing over here, we set your role to student. Again, this is just iteration one on this role-based uh, setup. Ultimately, you might wanna be able to have like a drop down in the UI where a user can change between a teacher and a student role, kind of like Udemy, where you have like one login with different like types of accounts. But I figured why would a teacher have a same email for the student for right now? So I'm keeping it kind of simple, but so that's how I kind of do that. Um, and then once you have the role set on the user, we can actually use that for various things on the UI. So for one example is this student's uh, table here. This actually changes based on the role you're on. So right now I'm logged in as a student, student Bob, which I believe is probably hidden from my webcam. So let me just go ahead and do this. So over here, we got student Bob. This, this table, like I said, is dynamically changed based on your role. So right here, if you look at the URL, it says classrooms, and then we have classroom ID. If I go down here to the bottom and change my role to teacher, you'll see that we're on the same URL here. I am teacher Rick, but I get some more things to show up in my side nav and I get some more things to show up in this table when I go to assignments. Before it had a, a grade column and now that's gone, right? And I also have an edit button. So I, I'll go back and just show you real quick in case you weren't paying attention, but I go as a student, I have grade and I have view. So how did I make the content on the page dynamically change based on your role? So let's go ahead and go to the classroom screen. And here, if I go to the student section, or I'm sorry, in here, I have like some tabs, right? So depending on which tab you have selected here, it'll change the content on this page, which you can see here if the selected tab is assignment, which I do believe we have selected right here. So assignment, we then check, is the role a teacher? And if it is, we're gonna show the teacher assignments section. Otherwise, we're gonna show the student assignments section. So if I look at teacher assignments, it's just a table that has like some additional things where I can actually get rid of this, has admin access. We know it's a teacher role, so we should see the, uh, the edit button. And then over here, if this has admin access, let me clean this up a little bit. So that's how I'm showing like the different tables depending on the role that you're logged in as, right? So that's how you do it in the front end. And depending on how you do this, there might be a quick little flash of content. So you got to kind of keep that in mind and design around that because the role has to be loaded dynamically at a later point and it might not be in your UI by the time the page starts rendering. So I would say make sure you always show like the, the less permissive content if possible, or just don't show anything until everything is fully loaded. I don't know if I'm truly doing that correct in this UI, but that's one aspect. How do you dynamically change content based on the role in the front end? 
you just basically check the role. And if you're using next auth, you just say session data user role or wherever you want to track the user to the role and, and display the content differently, right? But the other aspect of it is like the, the teacher has the ability to do things like create new assignments, edit assignments and stuff. So let's kind of look at um, how that works. So I'm going to go open up a edit assignment or create assignment modal here like this. And you'll notice that when you actually click on the submit of the form, which is happening here, it's going to invoke a TRPC mutation called create assignment, which is basically just hitting an endpoint and sending over some data, right? But we need to verify that, hey, is the user making this request? First of all, are they authenticated? And in the, are they authorized? All right, are they authenticated and they authorized? So let's go and open up the classroom router and let's try to find this create assignment mutation. So go here, right here. So this is how I'm using the role-based authorization in my application. Um, there's many ways you can do this. You can do a higher order function that basically wraps all your code here and first checks if the user has access to the resource. You could do a TRPC middleware. So over here, I can add a middleware that verifies that the user making the request has access to the classroom ID. But honestly, it just, just pick a consistent way and do it. It doesn't really matter. Don't waste too much time overthinking it. But what happens is when the front end makes a request to create assignment here, we're passing in a classroom ID and we're saying, hey, we want to create an assignment for classroom A. And when this function fires, I'm calling this method assert is classroom admin that takes in a context and a classroom ID. And what this function does is it checks to see are you the same user? So this isn't even role based auth. I should even, I, I should kind of explain that this is more like a fine grain access control. So I get the classroom based on the classroom ID and every classroom has a an original creator, right? So in this case, classroom A was created by teacher Rick. So if I look here, I get the classroom, I double check that, hey, is the current user who's making this request to this endpoint, are they the same ID that the classroom was created with? And if they're not, throw an error, okay? So now that makes sure that anyone who tries to hit this mutation, because again, like, if someone's smart enough, they can go in your UI and they can find what routes are accessible and they can start hitting them. So I say, hey, make sure that the person hitting this endpoint, they have to be the same teacher who created the classroom in the to begin with, right? And then if they aren't, throw an error. If they are, we can actually start doing the real logic that creates the assignment and uploads that. So that's how I did that. I think there's another one called create classroom, which I need to kind of check if the person is a teacher, because obviously students shouldn't be able to create classrooms, but anyone who's a teacher can create a new classroom, right? So if you look at this code here, there's not really any type of role-based authorization going on. It's just kind of like make sure they're logged in, which isn't what we want. I think what we actually want is we want to check and assert that they are a teacher. So I do have like a little utils folder in the server here that says assert is student. I haven't made one for assert is teacher. So let me go ahead and do that. And like I said, like just you can do this 101 different ways when it comes to coding. Just do whatever makes sense for you and your project and refactor it later on if it doesn't work. So this function is going to say check to make sure that the role, if it's not equal to teacher, then we're going to throw an exception and say unauthorized. And I can use this same function and I can go ahead and put it right here and make sure I pass in this and I need to also pass in I think I just need to pass in context that's it so if I import this thing in I technically I don't even need to check this anymore because if you're not logged in this thing is going to throw an error anyway so I can delete half this code here I believe so that should work pretty good. Um, I do need to get the, the context session user ID. So I do need to put that over there. But that's how I can basically protect endpoints. It's pretty easy. Just throw a method in here. You know that method is going to throw an error. And this whole thing is testable with unit tests. If you were to uh, you know, pull out the content of this function into a separate use case file and write some unit tests over it. 
Now, like I mentioned, there's ways to do middlewares. So I have a middleware up here that is before all of these routes, right? So the middleware is going to run first, kind of like express, and it's going to run this code before any of these queries or mutations work. Now, what this is saying is basically check to make sure that the user has a session. If they don't, throw an error. And this is how I kind of just put like a, a global guard in front of all of the API endpoints for this router. Just to make sure that, hey, like you are logged in with either a teacher or a student. Um, I think it's okay to do something like this, like just protect all the endpoints that you want to. But I do also think there is a benefit to having the role-based authorization or the fine-grained authorization kind of inside the code itself. Because often you have to like fetch the, the classroom or fetch um, something else in your code. Like, <clears throat> for example, here, assert is admin role. This function has to fetch the assignment to check the authorization. But sometimes you actually need that same assignment you just fetched inside your business logic, right? So you could potentially have this thing return the assignment and you can use that same assignment over here. And that reduces one extra request to your database. Um, it's kind of a premature optimization, honestly, but you can do that. And I like doing it here more so than doing it in a middleware because I find it kind of strange to have the middleware like set more things on the context just to pass it to the functions using it. I'd rather it, you know, be done in the function itself. Anyway, that's all I wanted to kind of share with you all. Um, if you guys are not really familiar with how to do role-based authorization or fine-grained authorization to make sure users have access to certain resources, uh, leave a comment below if you have a special way that you like to do it. I know in Express and Nest.js, you might have decorators or something like that that you can actually put in front of your functions here. But I'm fine with just putting stuff right into your function. It's fine, in my opinion. Anyway, that's about it. If you want to talk to me directly, feel free to join my Discord, where you can ask questions to get help with your programming endeavors. And like always, like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon if you want to get more content like this in the future. Have a good day, and happy coding.